So ladies, for me, mindfulness is very important. When I decided to change my life and I couldn't go to New Zealand because of, of the way my body was, I knew I had to change. There was no two ways about it. And I know there's an Afrikaans saying, and Jennifer and, and Renee, I, we call it Hana Hana. It's like your hands and you, you know, tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is another day. So the Afrikaans people, we will know Hana Hana. It means I'm not going to be bothered. Tomorrow is another day. So there was no time for me to say tomorrow is another day. I had only 18 months to lose the weight. So for me, I had to rewire my brain. It, all the things, every day, even if I wake up, everything I had to change my habit. I had to do, do so much. My husband got a fright. He said he didn't marry the person that he, he, he knew for all the years. We are married now for 32 years. So the last three years, I was very strict on myself. But the thing for me is mindfulness. That's why I became a mindfulness advocate. I became a mindfulness teacher. And till the day, I am going to say goodbye to this beautiful earth. And ladies, I've got a secret. This is going to be when I reach the age of 120 years old. <laughs> I will practice mindfulness every day and I will act, act, actively act and tell people about mindfulness. So what I wanted to say, my, my, my idol was, I, my biggest wish was to be in New Zealand with my children. And because my BMI was 54%, and I was only allowed to get a permanent position at 35%, I knew I had to make big changes. So for me, I have brought in so many things. And later on, when I went on a course, or when I first was introduced to mindfulness, for the first time, and I know I'm going to be tearful, but ladies, this was a big thing. For the first time, I had a name for all the changes I brought into my life. Mindfulness, wow, that is exactly what I was doing for almost 20 months before I knew I was doing mindfulness. For me, I always say, I am in this lift. And to have a BMI less than 35%, I need to get to the penthouse. And ladies, a big secret, my BMI is 30%. So I am so, <laughs> I am so happy, happy, happy. But in order to get to that 35%, I have to go to the penthouse. And there's two floors, two floors. That is a big thing. So when you go past the second floor, you, the lift open and there is beautiful balloons and just inviting you come come on over and people telling you come on over but you stack your neck in there and you are very just checking what's going on that's the second floor so the second floor for me is if I skip a meal or if Say, for instance, there is something that I'm in such a hurry and it only happened one day that I couldn't do my dry brushing because my dry brushing takes seven minutes. And then also I couldn't do um, my shower talk. I showered for three minutes. <laughs> I had only three minutes to shower, but it happened only once. So I went to the second floor and peeked out. Because I went back into the lift and every day I'm doing my dry brushing. The dry brushing helps with your, 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 to get a toxin out of your, your system. You're welcome to check my video on dry brushing, but there's a lot of other ladies, beautiful. They've got, you know, they have got brushes and everything. You can go on YouTube. I, I call her Mrs. Mrs. YouTube. 
<laughs> this is YouTube. Go and look at it. It's beautiful. And that practice also helped my stomach to go every day because that was one of my biggest problems that my stomach didn't want to go every day. Well, also the thyroid, but I think it's also the dry brushing up. And then ladies, when I get into the shower, I will touch myself everywhere, everywhere. And I will tell myself, thank you so much. And I even the, the fat part, thank you for being part of my life. Thank you for um, making, uh, holding me in a cocoon. But I am now good. I don't need you anymore. You are welcome to go. Ladies, and I am doing that. Like I said, once I couldn't do it, there was no time. But even if I didn't do the dry brushing, I did the self-talk. I don't think about anything else in that shower. It's me time. It's a need time. So then I do that and I will get back to the journaling. I know we are talking about journaling as well, but let me tell you, ladies, then you go up the lift and everything is working. Excellent. You're on your plan. There's nothing, nothing going that is in your way that is not working. And then, ladies, oh, 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 I must tell you the seventh floor, the seventh floor, oh, oh, oh. If you get onto the seventh floor, that's a big problem because you are visiting every room. So you will go like this. I've got the door here next to me. <laughs> Hello. You in 701, how are you? And you will talk. And then you go to the next, the next, next um, flat. Hello, I'm Sunit. It's now uh, room 702. How are you? So that is also a place I want, uh, visit a few times. But I tell you guys, that that is the one that I said I am scared to go back to my, you know, my previous life. So that one, I will give you an example. When I was in, in New York, I didn't have a dry brush. I couldn't stay, I couldn't do my smoothies in the mornings. The, the smoothie I want, you get smoothies in New, in, 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 in New York, but they're very sweet. They're not like, um, I ask you, can I please put um, um, kale or what is that other one, a spinach in? She looked at me, she said, no, I don't have that ingredients. <laughs> okay, then I will take another smoothie, but it's not the right smoothie for me. It's very sweet and there's yogurt in and honey and he's very good, but I, I couldn't do the diet. I couldn't eat five times a day. And uh, so that, that by my trip to um, New York, it took five days before coming to uh, Dallas. I was on the seventh floor. So mindfully, I knew I could not do what I was supposed to do. And I didn't beat myself up because I couldn't do it. I still eat in moderation. I tried to drink as much water as I could, but I couldn't get to my quota that I was supposed to drink. And it was okay because I know I was on the seventh floor and I know I wouldn't have stayed there for long because ultimately my why was so big and I wanted to go to the penthouse. And that's the reason why I got back into the lift when I was in, in, in Dallas, Texas. The next day, I started with my, my sister brought, bought my the ingredients for my smoothie. And she also brought, bought me a, a beautiful dry brush set that I could use. So then when I was back on the 9th of January in Dallas, I started the next day. So I want, just wanted to say, doesn't matter what your, your penthouse is. If you mindfully, if you go and you step out on the second floor and you look around and you get into the lift and you stay in the building, it will be perfectly okay. And then if there is sometimes a day or two that comes your way and you have to go to the seventh floor, and you have to go and greet all the people on the seventh floor, then it's also okay. 
Just remember your why. And then get back into the lift. Because you didn't leave the building. I always say, never leave the building. You could go to the second floor. You can go to the seventh floor, but never leave the building. And then ultimately, when you reach your penthouse, don't just celebrate when you get there. Celebrate small um, scales as well. For me, the first time I could put a towel around me, ladies, Without anything showing, it was like, oh, oh, oh. I cannot tell you, it was about 30 years. This, well, it was not the same towel, but a towel, a sheet is fitting me. I was like, yeah. So I went to my husband and said to him, leave me, leave me, look, the towel is fitting me, fitting me. And he said, but I will, we don't have it on. I, you know, you know, ladies. Sometimes you have to do naughty things, but it was not, it was like beautiful. But yes, that towel didn't stay up long, but I, I, I celebrate scalable and non-scalable events. Mindfully, I have done also uh, my journaling. As I showed, this is my, my journal. And I can show my nails today because on Friday, my nails was not ready. It was still in, in, in gardening mode. We were in the garden for three days. But I have, I have done almost every year I've done a book. Uh, and I, I have done more than 12 books now. And in year, I write. I try to write in my diary almost every day. But like I said, if there's something happening and you cannot write it, don't beat yourself up. Just when you get to it, write it again. For me, it's important to write down five, five things I am grateful for. Because, ladies, if the more you're grateful, the more things will happen to you. And I have my bucket list. And I am so privileged to have been able to tick off two of my bucket lists this weekend. But I wrote in here and I said, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to get my first American medal. And Jennifer and Renee, our medals in South Africa is plastic. This medal is beautiful. They are medals. They are not plastic. So I am so impressed with my medal. I cannot tell you, ladies. I cannot tell you. And then driving that Corvette not fast and be driven in the Corvette fast. I had to take off my hat to, when we were on the highway. So you went like, woo, woo. It was, it was like this. It was beautiful. But in here I wrote, thank you for my sister that arranged the Corvette. Thank you for that gentleman that have done it for me. Thank you for my brother-in-law that inspired me so much with the exercise that I also wanted to do a medal, get a medal in, in America. I wrote everything down. And then another reason why I have a diary. I am writing what the children is doing. So the other day, it was about a year ago, my daughter asked me, Ma, when... When did Xander get his tooth? I said, well, I cannot exactly remember, but if you can give me a, a, a day, I will ask my son to take off the books uh, um, on the top because I have this, uh, this uh, a lock that I locked it. I put it in a plastic. And then I also put pictures in it and also um, uh, beautiful um, stickers I bought. Ladies, I bought so many stickers here. My husband is going to tell me, Sanit, look here. It's three packs, but it's, it's pages and pages of stickers. <laughs> My husband is going to tell me, Sanit, can I believe you bring? But I will, I will tell him, there's a lot of stickers. And you got it from the dollar shop. I was so happy. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I also put stickers in, put stickers in my diary. Um, 
I don't have all the photographs, so I make collages with the photographs and then I put it on. So what I will do just before I will be leaving, I will be asking my sister to take me to Walmart and I will be uh, developing all the photographs so that I can, can put it in here. And then this is also a history for my children, for my children's children, and even for all the children or my um how can I say nageslag? Ach, ladies, help for my um great grandchildren. Yeah, for all the, the 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 generations coming. Thank you, Yvonne. For all the generations coming, they can see what I have done in a particular time and how I felt in a particular time. And when I'm a hundred, I will go through my diary and see what I have done in certain times. So definitely, it will be a memory, a memory book for me. So, ladies, this is my diary, and I must say. I try always to get beautiful diaries so that it makes me happy to take it up. It goes everywhere I go. When we went camping, I took my diary. I didn't take a lot of things. I took a few books to read and I took my diary. So my diary is going everywhere. So I don't know if you've got any questions that you wanted to ask me around your di diary. Is there any questions on mindfulness? I've done a beautiful mindfulness session. I, it took me a few hours, actually uh, it took me more than three days to write down the, the poems, the, erect, the correct wording. Um, I didn't do all the pictures as yet, but I try and do it as beautiful as I can on my Facebook um, business page. I'm not, I don't know if you are aware, that Facebook have invited me to be a digital creator. So from next month, I will be getting money from, from Facebook because of all the things I have done this for. So I had to put it on my Facebook page um, and then also on the Diamond Beauties. They also count the Diamond Beauties. So I just want to say thank you so much for all of you being on the Diamond Beauties, for giving me your comments and also posting your beautiful quotes, I can just say I am so blessed, so blessed and so blessed to have you all in my life. So ladies, I am truly sorry that Sean couldn't be here. I asked for his approval to give you his presentation. But the thing is, we didn't ask the ladies that's also on that side if we can have their approval. So I just asked the Lord to guide me and I did the talking and I think it was beautiful. Thank you so much for listening to me. So now if I can give it over to the honor, the honor, if you can come on the camera. Oh, 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 I don't know if you saw my post on Friday, you and both Jennifer. So Jennifer, I've got another lady that wants to contact you for your work that you do with churches and inspiring people. So I will be do, I was hoping she will be here today. I think maybe there is something that she couldn't make it, but uh, I, I would have asked you to stay with her so that I can introduce you. But we will do it. I tell you, ladies, it's going. <laughs> It's going, it's going. I'm so excited. So, Diana, I hope you also enjoy what I said that you are. And if there's not a person that wants to love, you can make them love. So, <laughs> I am so happy. I am also happy to have met you. You are an incredible woman. We did the fire walk together, ladies. It was exhilarating. And I never knew I'm going to say that word because I always struggle with that word, exhilarating to do the firework. So, Diana, thank you so much for doing this. I know you are coming back in two weeks' time to do your longer session. And you did help me out because the lady canceled for today. So, thank you. Thank you so much, my beautiful Diana. All over to you. Thank you, Zanette. Thank you, everybody. So the reason I switch off my camera, just so you can know, is because I switch off my light. I have load shedding at the moment. So and I just want to save battery on my phone, on my computer. Zanette, you were talking about gratitude 
And I have to show you right next to me, I have the magic. And for those who have not read the magic yet, it's an, a 28 day book about gratitude. And I actually, I'm redoing it again, starting today. I was muted, I was muted, sorry. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Yes, perfect. Right. You only muted for just a second right after you started talking about the magic. <laughs> it was the magic. It was magic. It was oh, magic. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, when Sonette asked me to speak tonight, um, and I found out what the subject was, the topic for tonight, mindfulness, I thought, what does mindfulness mean to me? And then I looked it up and okay, that's not me playing music. And what it's, what it said is a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts and bodily sensations used as a therapeutic technique. And the first thing that popped into my mind right then and then, and I said to Sunny, I am going to speak about forgiveness sets you free. So why forgiveness? What is forgiveness? And once again, I consulted my friend Google, and it says, Forgiveness is defined as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Forgiveness can change your life. Forgiveness does not mean you erase the past or forget what has happened. It doesn't even mean the other person will change his behavior. You cannot control that. All it means is that you are letting go of the anger and the pain and moving on to a better place. So for me, forgiveness is very, very important. It plays a huge role in my life. Uh, Sanet would know on my arm here, the words here says, please forgive me. And that is the last message my late husband left for me. Two and a half years ago, I arrived home one day and he had taken his own life. And the last words on his note was, please forgive me. So what does that mean to me? Yes. I forgave him. I sat next to his body that night and I said to him, I forgive you. I cannot control his decisions. I cannot turn back the clock. I could not change it. The only thing I could do was to forgive him for the choice that he had made. And then I started thinking, for the greater part of my adult life, I have been walking around with so much anger and resentment and hatred within me because of what has happened to me in my past. I was married when I turned 22. I got divorced when I was 23 because he had an affair. I had anger towards him because how dare you cheat on me. Then I was in a relationship for 12 and a half years. It started off as a good relationship, but then there was abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. I had to go through all of that. And the anger and the hatred just built up within me. I was in a situation where I didn't know how to get out of this. And Vic's last words to me came, please forgive me. And it's not just forgiving him. It's forgiving everybody that has hurt me that's harmed me from the day I was born they might not even think they've hurt or harmed me but within my heart 
I know I've been hurt or harmed. And bringing out forgiveness, it sets me free. The day Vic died, his family turned their backs on me. So much so they did not even attend his memorial because they have so much hatred towards me for the decision he has made. I have answers. I have received so many um, answers and proof that it was not my doing. It was his decision. And all I can do is forgive him. But I had to also forgive his family. I cannot walk around with a grudge towards them because when I needed them the most, they turned their backs on me. I do not have family in South Africa. I've got my parents, I've got friends, I've got my brother at the time was still in Dubai. I have one sister in South Africa, another one in Holland. So my world shrunk. I, the support I so desperately needed was not there for me. I had to forgive everybody. Because if I don't forgive, I cannot move forward. I have written so many letters of forgiveness. And I, then I go out and I burn it. And it just sets me free because I'm no longer holding on to the past and the hurt and the harm. I am free to be me. And I have my reminder on my arm because whenever I think, ah, please forgive me. And I forgive myself for things I have done in the past where it was a block uh, on my, my path forward, I cannot change the past, but I can forgive myself for the steps I've taken at that time, at that specific time, they were the right steps to have been taken. Today, it goes completely against who I am and what I stand for. But at that time, it wasn't wrong for me. It was something I had to do. And I forgive myself for what I have done. And I am grateful for the opportunity that I can move forward. And just before I'm going to end off, I just want to read Diana Cooper's forgiveness decree to you. And if you're interested, I can share this with you as well. It goes as follows. I forgive everyone who has ever hurt or harmed me, consciously or unconsciously, in this lifetime or any other, in this universe, dimension, plane, or level of existence, or any other. I offer them grace. I ask forgiveness for everything I have ever done to hurt or harm another, consciously or unconsciously in this lifetime or any other, in this universe, dimension, plane, or level of existence, or any other, I ask for grace. I forgive myself for everything I have ever done to hurt or harm another, consciously or unconsciously, in this lifetime or any other, in this universe, dimension, plane, or level of existence, or any other, I accept grace. I am free. All chains and restrictions fall from me. I stand in my full power as a master. So it is, it is done. Ladies, I thank you for listening to me. Thank you for sharing this space with me. Sunny, thank you for having me. I am going to switch off my video and my light so I can reserve my battery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was beautiful. And Diana, you know, when you have told your story to me, it was such a privilege to hear you. And you know, tonight, tonight there was a different glow around you all. And I know it's power loud sharing. So Jennifer and Renee, there's a lot of problems with power in South Africa. There's a lot of time the power is off. I know you've got load shedding, but still, it's like you, you are healed. You are beautiful. You are amazing. And I am so proud and honored to know you. Thank you so much, the honor.
<laughs> I see that you now have sent you a message. Uh, I really needed to hear that. Ooh, let me just see if I can go back to the chat. I really needed to hear this today. Many thanks and blessings to you. Thank you so much for that, Renee. So now, now is it our songbird. I couldn't wait for today. So today our session was awesome. Today was such a special day, actually, because I actually asked uh, Jennifer and Diana if they can help me out this week. As the people that uh, would have come, uh, the lady that have, would have done the longest session, she let me know that uh, she couldn't make it. Her husband decided to leave her and the three kids for a young, young woman. And I said to her, I am okay. You're going to be okay. I try to uh, send her a message every day. And I must say today, she said she is feeling a little bit better. So I am so happy. And then Jennifer, when I asked you to come, and you said yes. I was like over the moon. So thank you so much for this. And I love what you have told me. I loved your songwriting for Mother's Day. And we're going to play out with your forever song. And it will be your one of your own songs. So my beautiful song, but if I can give it over to you. Thank you. Hello again. Hope you don't get tired of seeing my face. <laughs> I said, yes, I can do it. I do have another meeting at noon, my time, and it's about 20 minutes before that. So um, I might deliver a little bit quicker. Um, I might talk fast, but I promise I will do my best to bring you the best value that I can for the time that we have together. Um, my name, as you know, is Jennifer Gerald. I'm affectionately known as the Boundary Hunter. That came about when I realized that all the work that I had done on myself and was helping others to do um, was all around healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries was not something that I knew about. In fact, I didn't have any boundaries. And I found out later that that meant that I had porous boundaries, kind of like a sponge, kind of sucks everything up and then it, it oozes everything out. And if it's left alone for too long in that state, it gets really yucky and, and gross. And that happens to us. And when we don't have boundaries that are healthy and and we we take on everybody else's garbage <laughs> and we and we turn it into our own garbage and then everybody else's business becomes everybody else's business because we don't have any boundaries right uh, that's how I lived and I was a mess um, I was scared I was depressed um, at one point I was a hundred pounds heavier than I am right now um, I'm only five foot one I used to weigh 280 pounds and I was dying because I didn't have any boundaries uh, in myself or for anyone else and so um, I too was in a very abusive and, and scary marriage when I say scary he wasn't physically abusive but it was definitely verbal and mental to the point that he actually convinced me that I was a horrible person and that I should just kill myself. So um, in June of 2015, I took a short walk to my very hot car. Um, I was at church. I thought, well, maybe if I die at church, I'll get halfway to heaven. So I locked myself in my car and everything in the news says if you lock in a baby or you lock, lock in a dog, being in a hot car with no windows down, you're, it's, it's done. It's over in 20 minutes. Two and a half hours later, I woke up in my hot car, which I did the math later was 148 degrees inside. And I was still alive and I had a decision to make sit back and wait to die or open the door and learn to live. So as you can see, I chose to open that door literally and figuratively. I opened the door to my car, releasing the hot air, allowing oxygen to come back in, as well as opening the door to the rest of my life. 
It was not an easy journey. It was very scary. I ended up in the hospital, in the psychology ward. Uh, actually, emergency psychology hold for 24 hours. And I sat there. I didn't want to sit on the, the bed. It was this dark, cold room with a heavy metal door and a teeny tiny little window and a little speaker on the wall if I wanted to talk to somebody. I was in prison. I was, I was in a cell. I didn't even get sheets because that's dangerous when you're in the psych ward. And I was exhausted and I stood in the corner with my head against the wall for hours until fatigue took over and I had to sit down. And as I sat there, I listened to everything going on around me. And I listened to the pain and the agony that was being hollered, screamed, yelled, pounded from the rooms around me. And I realized that I didn't want to go upstairs. That I, I felt at that time I was being selfless, but... I was like, they, they need it more than I do. <laughs> and so I, I made an agreement to leave the hospital with the exception that I would go through a program called Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. That is specifically for people who have been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Oh, did I mention I had previously gotten that diagnosis, which was the, the little push to walk to the car. I didn't even know I had it. I was 41 years old. I had been misdiagnosed and mismedically treated and mistreated my whole life. So now I had a diagnosis and it was the scariest thing on the planet. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. My head was full of fear anxiety, doubt, depression, confusion. I was going through a divorce. I thought I'm going to lose my kids. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to, I'm a monster. So through this process of DBT, which was an 18 month program, apparently I'm an overachiever because I actually finished it in 12 months. Um, I was like, I have things to do. It was the hardest work I've ever done. But one of the things that saved my life in that program, a year's worth of training, a year's worth of tools, but every single time we finished a subject and went back to, before we started the next one, we started with mindfulness and we went back to mindfulness. So through that journey, um, I learned some skills that I have now turned into what I call FOCUS. So that FOCUS is an acronym and I'm going to give you the steps and I cannot do justice to this in just five minutes or seven minutes, but I will share what they are briefly. F, check the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. Who, what, when, and where. If in your list you hear why and how, cross them off. Those are not facts. Why and how are directly connected to emotions. So if it's an emotion, it is not a fact, ma'am. So check the facts. By doing so, you're going to identify what it is you're feeling. Am I feeling afraid? Am I feeling anxious? Am I feeling doubt? What are the facts around that? Check the facts. If there's a who or a how, excuse me, if, yeah, if there's a how or a why, excuse me, how or why is emotion, who, what, when, and where, those are your facts. The O and I'll, and I'll type something up so we can put a document in the, in the group, uh, Senate, after, after the fact, because I do have to go to my meeting. But um, the O is to observe. You're going to observe what's going on around you. 
But more importantly, you're going to observe what's going on inside you. And one of the things to be really, 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 really honed in on is the wordless thoughts that aren't coming out of your mouth. But if you hear it, write it down. If you hear, I can't do this, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm weak, I'm worthless, I'm a failure. I can't, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not enough. All that garbage, it's, it's probably rolling. We have like 600 thoughts a second. If you catch it, write it down. Observe, observe your jaw, observe your body, observe your breath. Are you holding your breath or are you panting? When we are faced with fear and we hold our breath, it makes it much more intense. If we begin to breathe, we can transform that fear into excitement. Put feet on the fear and turn it into a fantastic adventure. Fear is actually a disguise for something really exciting that's about to happen that's going to yank you right out of your low comfort zone. And everything awesome is on the other side of the comfort zone. So, observe it. Write it down. Participate in your process. Because guess what? Nobody else can do it for you. Nobody's coming to save you. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a pooper on the party, but it's a true fact. Nobody's coming to save you. Nobody dropped half of Sinet. Sinet had to do it, right? Nobody else dropped 100 pounds off me. I had to do it. Nobody else got me out of my car and into the rest of my life. I had to do it. So observe, participate, be a willing participant will ing to lean into change, will ing to change your mindset, will ing to be the best part of your day every day. So that's O. C, change your mindset, ladies. If your mindset smells like poo, turn that poo into fertilizer and grow yourself a garden. Make it flowers, make it fabulous. And one of the best ways when I work with my clients and I teach them this step, the, the exercise that I give them, and I would challenge you all to do this, the exercise I give them for changing their mindset is called loving kindness. Now, how did this start? My husband and I started dating. Um, we met seven years ago. We started dating almost a year after we met. Now we're going on our two-year wedding anniversary next month. But I started writing him a note every day in his lunchbox. And he shared with me how much that changed and transformed him. He said, I, it sets my day, it sets the tone, and, and I love how it makes me feel. So, loving kindness. I challenge you to write yourself for a minimum of seven days in a row a love note. Not a love letter, just a sticky note. Just this big. Dear Sunette, dear Yvonne, dear Lori, dear Diana, dear Renee, I just want you to know how amazing you are today. I want you to know how much of a difference you make in the world every day. I love your eyes. I love your smile. I love your heart. I love your open arms. I love the way you share yourself with the world. Shine bright, beautiful. You've got this. I love you. And yes, I can fit that much on a sticky note. I've been doing it a long time. <laughs> and so each morning I write my husband his love note, I incorporate my own self into that note so that I can set the tone for my day too. So that's change your mindset. So the challenge is loving kindness. Write yourself a love note every day, starting today. Starting today. All right. Yeah. Oh, Diana, you're so welcome. Thank you. All right. So the next one is the you. Now you've changed your mindset. You took all those poopy words and turned them into love. And now you get to say them out loud. You get to upgrade your word choices. 
So when you feel yourself going into this dark place of I'm not good enough, I'm not enough, I'm not, change it to I am. I am capable of learning new things. It is possible to take a dandelion that comes up as a weed and cherish it until I can blow on it and it becomes dreams. Upgrade your word choices. Anytime you hear something negative come your way, stop it. Flip it. Turn it upside down. If you chance to meet a frown, do not let it stay. Quickly turn it upside down and smile that frown away. Upgrade your word choices. Never let that smile stay upside down. Although you want to work your muscles every day and it takes about 47 muscles to frown and about four to smile, those are not the muscles you want to practice. Go out of this world with crow's feet because you smiled every day. Because by golly, you don't want your face down on your chest. Gravity's working hard enough on us. Turn it upside down. Keep that smile upright and live your best life with upgraded word choices to be your best self because you're already there. You don't have to find yourself. You just have to acknowledge that you're there. God did not put you on this earth to blend in and play small. He put you on this earth. He built you just the way you are to stand up and stand out. So my goodness, shine, 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 shine. Yes, that's not the S, but I like it. The last one is the S, which is the toughest one because it's different for everybody. And that is to surrender. Surrender the outcome. As we face doubt and fear and anxiety and we struggle with a full mind instead of being mindful, surrender the outcome. When we start to feel all that resistance, the fear, the doubt, the anxiety, the anger, the frustration, it's because we're trying to control everything. But guess what? We can't. I know, there's a party pooper move. But it's true. We can't control everything. We cannot. I heard this recently. We cannot control the wind. But we can adjust our sails. So when we find ourselves feeling all that garbage, it's time to open our hands and let go. My, my tattoo right here says, let go and let God. I have one too, Diana. This is a memorial to my beautiful niece who passed from breast cancer at the age of 25, almost three years ago. But it's the truth. Let go and let God surrender. Surrender. When we let go of the need to control everything else, we will feel calm confidence move in. Our feet will become unbolted with the, oh, my camera's work. Oh, my camera's work. Sorry, I put my, I put my hands up. Now my fancy camera's following me as I bend over. Anyway, so when we let go, our feet become unbolted and we're able to move in the direction that we need to, actually that we choose to. It's never about need or have to. It's about want and choose. When we say I have to, or I need to, or I've got to, that inner human rebel goes, no, I don't. I don't have to do anything. Nope. So instead of saying I have to, or I need to, choose it. Because everything in this life is about choice. The difference between tragedy and triumph is about choice. The difference between anxiety and awesomeness is choice. The difference between doubt and being dynamic is choice. The difference from living in fear or living your most fantastic life is choice. So if I could give you any counsel at all, it's to not take advice 
or life tips from your fear. It has nothing valuable for you. There is nothing good in fear. So, to close my remarks, I'm looking at the clock going, oh my God, I can't be late. <laughs> this gal's like a psh. <laughs> but, um, so I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do because I know you wanted me to sing, no, but, I, I, <laughs> but I just want you to know that if we choose to go through life with a full mind, we will miss the view that God has planned for us. Mm. So choose to be mind full and live your best life through focus. I love it. I love it. I know you have to go one minute. So if you can, if you, if you want to put, do the focus and put it on the group and I will definitely let you come and sing for us again. I'm going to say thank you for your inspiration. I had so many goosebumps and then what I will do, I will save the chat for you so that I can send it to you. Oh, and thank you, you are welcome to say goodbye and you are oh, thank you. So just remember, just remember, just like my song says, I don't have time to cue up the guitar, but my forever song is sitting on the sidelines and it says, perception is truth. What does yours say? Does it tell you that you're strong or does it tell you that you're weak? Does it say that you're not perfect and there's no way to compete? Are you listening and accepting defeat? Are you sitting on the sidelines at war with yourself? Fighting who you are, wishing you were someone else. Letting fear and anger drive your car instead of realizing who you really are. You are all beautiful daughters of God. Remember whose you are and you will be able to identify who you are. Thank you for letting me be here with you today. I appreciate it. I promise I'll come back and sing again. Thank you for saving the chat, Sinette. I do have to run. Oh, what am I going to do with all this popularity? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Oh, wow. All right, Jennifer. Have an awesome evening. <laughs> wow wow ladies i hope you have enjoyed that thank you so much for being here i wanted to find out if i can ask you Yvonne, how was your say how was the session today it was a life-changing moment it was fantastic and i just found out that i must Think more about myself and be fabulous to myself. Wow, that's amazing. And is there something on mindfulness that you can bring in your life as soon as you get up from that chair? Um, be pretty and believe in myself. Beautiful. So now you've got the you've got a contract with us. If you get up on that off from that chair you can never go back to think you're not pretty you will always remember that you are pretty you are beautiful and that's also one of the reasons why i love to say my beautiful dharma beauties my beautiful yvonne because i can only see your beauty if the beauty is inside of me thank you so much for for, for saying that and then renee on your side did you enjoy the session? And what is the one thing that you will always remember regarding mindfulness? You're welcome to type it in. If you don't want to speak, Renee, then I will go to Laurie. And Laurie, if I can ask you. My name to start off with is not Laurie. I'm not a lorry or a bucky or a truck. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's all right. It's you can, you can either call me the American version, which is Laurie, or my name, my real name is Laurie. Laurie, I'm so sorry. It's an acute accent on the I, which is, it's actually French. Oh. But I don't, I don't roll the R because they say Laurie. 
Laurie. Yes, that's right, Laurie. Okay, I'm so sorry yeah. for that, Laurie. That's, no, that's quite all right. That's quite all right. Just thought I'd let you know that. Thank you. Um, because I also like to call people, you know, by their proper name or the, the name that they like to hear, you know. Yes. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of very interesting things. Um, one of the things that, and I'm just wondering if she's she's also done a bit of NLP or something, because the need to or got to is very much an NLP thing, you know, and it doesn't, you know, and <clears throat> the other thing is should. I should do this or I should do that. And when you start shooting all over yourself, it's not pleasant. You got it. Sunnet got it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. Oh, thank you, my beautiful Laurie. And do so, you practice mindfulness on your side? I'm so sorry. I do. I do. But I've been doing it for a long time. So it's kind of like, um, although, you know, none of us are perfect and uh, everything is improving as the saying goes, but um, I do from time to time fall over and then realize that I've got to get over it and the way to get over it I've discovered is to actually sit down and either take those deep breaths you know sort of a, a meditation breaths or what works really really well is to write down at least 10 things I'm grateful for by the time I'm finished I'm I'm completely changed completely. <laughs> wow. so that's, that's my my sort of way of getting mindfulness so to 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 write a gratitude I've got a book actually which my daughter-in-law gave me and it's really nice. So that's what I use. Oh, thank you so much, Laurie. I really appreciate it. And you must tell us now what you got from it today. Mm -hmm. I know. It was wonderful. I was in a little bit of a panic because he, uh, the, the gentleman said he couldn't. But, you know, I just, I, when he said he couldn't, I just breathe. Good for you. And I just asked the Lord to, to guide the session because the people that will be here needed to be here. And... Um, whatever will happen it will it will be the right way so I knew that doesn't matter what's going to happen it's going to be perfect so yes I I also love love all of you being here thank you so much Laurie and then, thank you thank you and then Diana um I know you can't put your camera on but how, how was your session uh, the rest of the session for you Annette, this was an evening with a difference, and I absolutely loved it. I really, really loved it. It was just, I don't know, everything just fell into place. It, it was like, um, you know, I spoke to my friend earlier, and she said, are you prepared for tonight? And I said to her, you know, I don't have a prepared speech. I'm actually just going to speak from my heart. And that's exactly what you did. And that's what Jennifer did. And it's just, we, we don't have to have this prepared speech. It's not Toastmasters or something where we, we're going to be not to and speak from the heart. Share the message from the heart. And that's what people needs to, you need to hear. And so thank you for giving me the opportunity. I absolutely loved it tonight. And I uh, felt completely comfortable and at ease oh, so yeah wow. thank you and thank you to all the rest of the ladies as well for being part of this group oh wow well, thank you so much and thank you um i am want to say have a beautiful evening in south africa ladies please look after yourself and renee thank you for joining us look after yourself you can have a beautiful day still it's just after two and it's quite hot here in Dallas, Texas. So I Are just, you making us jealous? <laughs> it's quite hot. It's like, wow, wow, wow. So just a reminder, it's going to be my birthday on the 20th of June. So we just not, there's not going to be an agenda. We're just going to have a party. So it's just a reminder that uh, that day, if you can be there, we're going to celebrate my party of my birthday. I will be 57, but I will send out, um, what is this that you call it? I think you name it, uh, save the date, <laughs> save the date. <laughs> so ladies, on the 21st of June, I will be flying back to South Africa. So yeah, I will definitely see if I can see some of you while I'm there. I'm not going to be there for long. Then I will be going to New Zealand. 
and next year I will be coming back to America. So I want to say, have a beautiful evening. And if you have dreams, put it on paper. Believe you me, it's coming true one by one and then be grateful. Be so happy that it, it came through. So uh, 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 I just want to say, I love all of you. Please look after yourself. <laughs> Thank bye. you so much, everybody. Okay. Bye. 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 bye bye, Diana. Bye bye, Renee. Bye bye. Love you all. Bye. Let me now stop the recording.